Good Thanksgiving morning. It is Thursday, November 28th, 2019. Hope all of you are doing out there well, enjoying your holiday. As we are early here on Thursday morning, we are just after 11 a.m. And the day is still getting young, right? Anyway, so as we get started here, of course, a part of Thanksgiving defined is football. And as I get into football, as I also am here on the road here, good morning, Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, the thing you know, the thing you notice is, uh, you know, you got the Jets going, you know, and they've won their last three games. You know, some people may think, oh, it's because of, it's because their opposition, uh, you know, the Giants, the Redskins, and you know, and, have the, and then the Raiders. Who, well, listen, something, remember something. The Raiders are a very quality opponent right now. Who, mind you, are fighting for first place in that AFC West right now. Okay, so that was a game where, you know, the Raiders have something, and the Jets going into three and seven last Sunday, you know, didn't have as much to play for. But you look, you look at what the Jets' situation is right now. I mean, they're four and seven. Their playoff chances are obviously 1.1%. Uh, the sad, I mean, the crazy part is they're only, I mean, the optimist would say, hey, you know what? They're two games outside of a wild card spot. True. That is true. They're not going to catch Buffalo. Buffalo's eight and three, depending on what happens with them against the Cowboys today, you know. And it wouldn't be, I mean, it wouldn't hurt them too much if, uh, if Dallas beats them today, but nonetheless. Um, but I mean, if you look, you look at the Jets, I mean, you're going to obviously looking back at this season and where they stand right now at four and seven, obviously, you know, we're going to be, they're going to be kicking themselves at that first game against Buffalo where they had a 16 point lead in the second half and blew it. Um, and then they're going to look at losing to the, you know, the winless Dolphins who at the time, or well, you think they're pretty much punting away the season, even though they are trying hard, but they were at, the, at that point they were winless and well dead and buried and everything else in between, you know, and it's almost like they didn't show up in Miami. You take those two right there. Okay. Six and five, you know, they'd be six and five right now, very much in the thick of everything else in between with the Steelers, the Raiders, the Colts. Um, Tennessee, all those other guys that are really knocking on the door. Four and seven may seem distant, but it's a distant four and seven. Okay, believe it or not, it's actually a very much a difference between five and six and four and seven. It's it's a big difference after eleven games. You'd be surprised, and that's uh, you know that's. That's how you um, you think, and not only that. Even if the Jets somehow run the table, okay. Even if they somehow run the table, you know, you're you're think, you know, you got to remember that, you know, the Jets until you know last Sunday against the Raiders, their three wins came all against the NFC, and a key tiebreaker is your conference record. Okay, that's a big tiebreaker. How you do in your conference. And right now, four and seven, the Jets are right now one and six against the AFC, against the AFC. So take those things away. Take Buffalo and Miami. Say they won those games, you're looking at six and five. You're looking at two and you're looking at two and two against your division. You're looking at three and four against your conference. You're not in bad shape. Okay. Yeah, we lost we lost Darnold. You know, we lost him to, you know, Mono. And that probably made all the differences in the world. But given the three games that he missed, I mean, he missed Cleveland, which when you look back, realized how beatable they are. You've gotten, you know, New England, they were not beating. Forget it. And that Monday night game at the Meadowlands, you know, showed you that, well, who cares what difference it would have made. And then, you know, Philadelphia, who knows? You know, who knows what could have happened there, even though the offensive line got dominated all game in that game. But being out, and outside of that, you know, but it does make you wonder, though, as an optimist or a pessimist. The pessimist may say, oh, that Dallas game, you know, they lost to Barry Cooper in that game. They're too offensive, you know, they're too Pro Bowl offensive linemen didn't play. Randall Cobb wasn't there, you know. I mean, the Jets had the 13th ranked defense in the league. 
okay? They're number one against the run, which, you know, has your hope, you know? Josh Jacobs last Sunday, who's emerged as one of the, uh, you know, better running backs in the game, Josh Jacobs was nowhere to be found, you know? They did it to Saquon Barkley, you know? Saquon Barkley had probably, arguably, the worst game of his career when, you know, we faced the Giants, you know? So running backs haven't exactly, you know, fared out well. You know, but in these final few games, you've got the winless Bengals on Sunday. Listen, listen, okay? The Jets have had these moments, okay? You saw it in Miami, you know, in the beginning of November. You saw you saw it there. You, you saw it when they played Cleveland last year, okay? You saw them when, you know, they played crap and, you know, all this other stuff. And then only to see them give it away. And when you play crappy teams like this, it scares you. Especially when you have a meddling season and even the slimmest of hope in your season. And, you know, you're, you're playing absolute crap. You know, it scares you. Yeah, the Bengals are 0-11. We know. But, I mean, you never know. You know, sometimes, knowing, knowing years past, the Jets may just be that team that, you know, Cincinnati gets their, you know, gets that win against. You never know, but... I mean, it, it scares you. It, it would. It scares me. You know? After Cincinnati's the Dolphins. Oh, the Dol- you know, we see the Dolphins twice a year, and they know they can beat us. You know, after that is, you know, if they can get to the Raven game six and seven, listen, uh, the Jets, and, and quite frankly, no one is beating the Baltimore Ravens right now. Okay? The Patriots didn't even do it. Okay? We can stop the run all we want. We can stop Lamar Jackson. The defense, being what they are, can stop Lamar Jackson all they want. Guess what? Baltimore's got a complete team. And if I'm not mistaken, they've got the top rank, they're the top ranked team in the NFL right now. Even though they Baltimore, New England has the better record, Baltimore has a complete team. And there's no messing with those guys. You know? There really is no messing with the Baltimore Ravens right now. I mean. So, you know, if they get there, if they can finish, if they can spoil the Steelers, if they can spoil Buffalo, you know, I mean, who knows, who knows what, you know, how things will be by then. I mean, if they can finish, <laughs> excuse me, 7-9, 8-8, eight eight, if they can finish there, you know, you can't be too upset with the season. Okay, you can't. All those frustrating losses, yes, but you cannot be too upset with how the season went. But, but anyway, you know, expectations were higher though, considering, but consider we haven't, the Jets haven't had CJ Mosley and Avery, Avery Williamson, who were supposed to be part of a, a front seven that was supposed to frustrate the heck out of opposing offenses, you know, but the D line doing what they've been, and we don't have Leonard Williams anymore. You know what? They haven't been terrible. And I think these, these guys out of nowhere, who are some of these guys? I mean, who's Bless Austin, you know, in the, in the secondary? You know, who's, you know, who who is, uh, you know, Terrell Basham, Neville Hewitt? Who are these guys? All these, you know, Nathan Shepard. I never heard of some of these guys. But all of a sudden, these guys are performing. They are. And they're getting the best out of Greg I mean, Greg Williams is getting the best out of these guys. I mean, you know, for all, you know, we, we were screaming, fire Gase, fire Gase. You know, I mean, you know, he's not a good head coach, but if you said if you were going to let Adam Gase go, Greg Williams would could have just taken over the position, and who knows? He got the best out of his players in Cleveland last year, and he ended up getting, he ended up being let go. And Freddie Kitchens, his replacement in Cleveland, you know, hasn't exactly fared out the best either, and even he was under fire, you know? But, you know, hey, you know, that defense... That run defense, if only the secondary can be like this. I mean, it almost seems like we don't miss our $72 million signing in Tremaine Johnson. You know, we don't, you know, there's, this. you know, you may think, oh, no. But you know what, though? They have not been terrible. They have not. So, you got to give them that. You know? So, four and seven. Season's basically dead, but you know what, though? You may think, oh, their schedule... You know, but the Steelers that are right there, they're down to their fourth quarterback and still somehow, some way of getting it done. It's crazy. But nonetheless, 
And then, you know, Buffalo, you know, Buffalo, they've just been, they've had a good year. You know, they've been sitting there in that fifth spot, you know, pretty much comfortably the way they've been playing. So, I mean, they're a team that's going to be, you know, in the playoffs. You know, and the Jets, I mean, again, four and seven, it's too little, too late, even with five games to go. You know what? You know, like I said, if they can finish seven, nine, eight, and eight, you know, obviously not successful, obviously disappointing, but, you know, though, all things considered, who they lost, and, you know, you know but, you know, though, again, I'm not, I'm going to keep my, you know, optimism reserved, okay? Like I said, who, who knows what it would have been if, you know, if we had Mosley and if we had Avery Williamson, you know? Mosley went down in that first game of the year against Buffalo, and that's when the entire narrative changed, you know? That 16 nothing lost 17 16. Everything changed because Mosley was such an X factor in that game. You know? And we signed him up all that money and he hasn't been healthy. He sort of tried to come back in that New England game and unfortunately it just didn't pan out. So, it is what it is, right? So, I mean, we'll see what happens anyway. Gotta make my stop here. Gotta pick up some food here for our Thanksgiving. So, let's get that lined up. Again, everyone, enjoy your holidays out there. Here I am. Hope you enjoyed your little ride through uh, part of Kissimmee, Florida, for those who do read this. And uh, we'll be uh, hopefully talking to y'all soon enough. All right. So, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Hopefully get their job done in Cincinnati on Sunday. And from there, we'll see. All right. From Kissimmee, Florida, everyone, good night. I mean, have a great Thanksgiving. See you soon.